Okay, here we're going to look a little bit about how we learn and think. How do we process information? How do we go through a problem uh, and work together to solve a solution? Or how do we look at a situation that might be ever-changing and how do we maximize our returns there? So thinking is allowed in this section here in particular. So first off, looking at how we learn and think. Well, our brain is where most of this action occurs and it consists of billions of interconnected neurons. Our senses stimulate specific neuron pathways. We have something called short-term memory, which is residual sensitivity pathways, and we have long-term memory, which is physical changes that may occur. And long-term memory can cause by repeated stimulation uh, and intense emotion. Sensory input and memory storage share the same circuits, and this causes associations to occur. So you'll find a lot in the uh, slides that I provide here, there's pictures. We produced the pictures here so you can kind of try to make associations and connections to hopefully take something, a topic that might be new to you, that might just go into the short-term memory and try to make it a little bit more longer lasting in your memory. So how we uh, know things? Well, our brains are great at two major things, recognizing patterns and filling in sensory gaps through, typically through the process of storytelling. So you can see there's a definite pattern here. Just as here, there's a pattern. We can look at this pattern to determine what comes next. So take a look for, for a second, determine what comes next. Well, if you said a green rectangle, you'd be correct. Let's do this again. For this pattern, what comes next? If you said yellow star, you'd be correct. And lastly, what comes next here? If you said blue square, you would be correct. So you can see how we're able to quickly recognize and identify these patterns. However, we want to be careful because this can get us into trouble. Uh, through pattern matching, rec we could recognize patterns that may not be real or misinterpreted, or we could not recognize patterns that are real. So when we're looking at developing patterns, while well, we're very good at doing that, we want to make sure that we're not kind of matching a pattern that may not exist there. For storytelling, not checking to see if stories are true could be an issue. 80% personal d disagreements are between people that begin as wrong stories. Each has told himself about the other's motivations. So you get into this like he said, she said type things. So you want to make sure when you're doing storytelling that you're able to fact check certain things. You want to just go off rumors and hearsay. Uh, in science, we're looking at testing our patterns and stories. We typically do this through a variation of the scientific method, where we have observations that lead to hypotheses that allow us to test those hypotheses, that then through analysis and observations, we can modify that hypothesis, go through more observations. And this is why we tend to get into this kind of circle here, because we have observations that lead to questions. Those questions then hopefully lead to hypotheses that we can test. We experiment, we analyze, we draw a conclusion. And we do more observations, which leads to more questions, and so on and so forth. So we kind of have this kind of revolving kind of circle here. Uh, sometimes we have interloop, in, internal loops that occur here. The key part here is in science in general is to stay inquisitive, to keep asking questions, to keep trying to find something else, to develop some conclusions, but also develop some more questions and go through and do some more observations. Specifically, uh, for studying, relating this to class, three hours of study at one time is not effective for long-term memory information. Studying the same thing 20 minutes three times a day for three days is more effective for long-term memory formation. This is what we want to focus on. Because a lot of the topics we're going to go over, we're going to come back and relate to, and I'm going to assume that you know them when we first went over them. Using your brain to rephrase or rework the material is more effective for long-term memory formation than repetitive reading or listening. So as effective as these video lectures may be for listening and repetitive going over, I want to make sure you can rephrase and rework the information. Hopefully we're able to do more of that in class, so you're able to develop that more long-term memory implications for the material that we go over. But keep in mind, cram studying for three hours the night before the test is not as effective as studying the same thing for 20 minutes, three times a day for three days is much more effective. Hopefully you're able to plan ahead and do some of that throughout this course.